Hey everyone. Last few weeks we've been talking a lot about mindset and I want to keep going deeper on this topic because, um, you know, I fundamentally believe that to do the work on our organisations we need to do the work on ourselves first. So what I want to do over the next few weeks is actually go back to something that I published um, a long time ago around capabilities for leaders in this new era um, that we're working in. And there's seven of them. Seven capabilities. I'm going to split these out over seven episodes and talk about each in a little bit more detail. So these are seven capabilities that I believe we need to build in ourselves. And I'll talk you through each one, but the idea is that we, we continue to do this work on an ongoing basis. So we're continuing to try and build our, um, our capacity for uncertainty and ambiguity, active reflection, among other things. We want to start to build these capabilities in ourselves and continue to refine them because ultimately it means that we're going to make better decisions, we're going to be in a better place to lead our teams through transformational change. So this stuff's about the inner work. And as I said, I'm going to run through these um, over the next little while. We'll split them out into seven episodes so you don't get totally overwhelmed. Um, but what I did want to talk about today was the first of these seven capabilities, and that is the ability to deal with uncertainty and ambiguity. So this one I put at number one for so many reasons. Um, I think it's something that I realized in myself has grown significantly since I started this work, that ability to just deal with constant change. And as somebody who's consulted in this space, so um, you know, I, I have worked in roles where we've, I've led from within an organization in a change space, but my favorite place is change maker, usually as an external, um, usually as a consultant in two organizations. And I think probably the hardest part for that is that that doesn't mean that it's easy for us either. Uh, you know, there's there's the sense of every time you get comfortable, then you're not changing and you kind of know that you have to start pushing yourself back outside of that comfort zone. So uncertainty and ambiguity and your, your tolerance for uncertainty and ambiguity, your ability to deal with that uncertainty is this constant uh, kind of journey. And uh, yeah, it's one of those things, every time you think it's settled, um, you've got to go back and revisit because often that can mean that you're getting too comfortable. And that doesn't mean that everything's changing all the time, but it does mean that we need to be open to continuing to move and to continuing to change, and we need to be responsive to that. And so that's a lot about how we're feeling on the inside. It's a lot about our own personal resilience and our ability to um, to work with something that's constantly moving and changing without being put into that fear response or into that sort of survival mode, into those responses where we're getting um, chronic stress and overload from just having to make decisions all the time. So um, one of my life hacks, like full disclosure, every now and again I have a day where I get sick of making decisions and I'll go and put a yoga class on so that somebody can tell me what to do for half an hour and I just take instruction because that's my level. So building your tolerance for uncertainty and ambiguity is about those hacks that you can do to, to create this space and this, this window within your work to be able to um, cultivate that and to work with it and to remain responsive to it without shutting down. So questions for consideration. Start to think about your own appetite for uh, certainty. Start to think about your own decision-making progress and ask yourself, do you have this drive for certainty and sort of locking things in that may be causing you to make some decisions prematurely? Remember, we want to defer decisions until the last responsible moment so that we continue to maintain that ability to adapt and to pivot. And so some of the some of the time we can be in a situation where we're dealing with a lot of uncertainty and we just want to lock something down. And we go into this mode where we start to prematurely make a decision um, just so that we can have some kind of anchor to draw on. So have a, have a bit of a conversation with yourself about that. Just check yourself around... Where are we making decisions? Um, is it the right point in time to make those decisions? Or is this something that maybe I'm making a decision early because I need that certainty um, and this is a way for me to kind of get a handle on things? And maybe that's not necessarily the right, the right thing to do. Um, you want to ask questions about how are you developing your learning agility as an individual, as a team, as an organization? How are we retaining 
the visibility of the long-term path, but encouraging that ability to test and learn as we go. What are we testing today? What are, what are we learning that can illuminate for us whether or not we're on the right path? You want to actively cultivate that ongoing, investigative, curious, uh, learning type approach to the work that you do. Uh, and one of the one of the hacks that I've worked with, and and I continue to coach this method, is to to start to sit down and think about what in my environment is predictable versus fluid. So where are those things that we know will stay constant? Um, you know. Bezos has famously said that our customers will never wish that their Amazon orders took longer to ship. So you can build strategy around that. Uh, but it's a really great method to, from an organizational perspective to understand those things that are predictable versus those things that are always changing and to build that strategy around that. And then as an individual, even within your own routines, you can look to those things that are very fluid. Uh, I had one client who I tell this story again and again and again because it was just it was such a powerful learning moment for me where um, she knew that every day she would walk into the office and it would be absolute chaos and and stuff changing all over the place and you know, for her that was an absolute nightmare she was she knew she was the type of person that wanted that certainty that wanted that consistency that that needed that path to just try and anchor into. And, um, and I tell her story because she made this amazing change within herself around building habits and rhythms outside of the office so that she had certainty in what was going on in other parts of her day. And that meant that she had more space for the uncertainty and the change and the ambiguity that was going on in her day-to-day -day office life whilst she worked through finding those things that were predictable versus those things that were fluid. Um, and it's, it's a bit like me going back to my yoga class and having somebody just tell me what to do for half an hour. So great exercise to go through on a personal but also an organizational level around what is consistent and versus what is fluid. So ask yourself these questions, right? Ask yourselves those questions around are we making this decision at the right point in time or are we heading to a decision and trying to lock something down? Because we need certainty, and actually that when we dig into it, that's actually the driving factor behind it is this, this lack of certainty that's driving a need for a decision rather than something else in the environment that's meaning that we have to make this decision now. Think about how you're cultivating that ongoing learning process, that investigation and that curiosity. Because there's something that goes on in our brains when we're learning and we're investigating. It's a constant change process, but there is that that guidance and that that momentum to it that helps to keep us focused and in that positive side of change and growth as opposed to falling back into that overwhelm of just everything's moving and then do that do that little assessment around what's what's consistent what is predictable what can I work around as an individual what can we as an organization work around because we know that that's that's largely anchored and not going to change and then what's fluid and so how do we come up with a plan for that and just the, I think it's the last thing I want to mention, and I'll do this with each of these, um, with each of these capabilities, is that there's a number of anti-patterns that go along with this, right? So raising your tolerance for uncertainty and ambiguity does not mean that you live in a constant world of chaos and that you have a total lack of visibility for these complex problems, these opportunities of the organizational context. That that sense of chaos and overwhelm from a lack of visibility is a total anti-pen. So we're not talking about letting everything run and just, you know, let go of the reins and, and off we go. What we're talking about is building that, cultivating that groundedness in yourself so that you can deal with the fluidity that's coming at you. So the anti-pattern to this, you know, if you if you have people in your organization that are saying, no, no, that's okay, that's that's uncertain but they're unable to give you the visibility and the accuracy of what they know today, that's one of those anti-patterns to look for. And the other anti-pattern is indecision and procrastination beyond that last responsible moment. There is a responsible moment at which we need to make a decision. Um, you know, prior to that, we're missing the opportunity for uh, growth, for pivot, for, um, for that opportunity to change and respond. If we go beyond that responsible moment, then we're starting to get into that point of procrastination. Um, we're playing catch up. We're on the back foot and we're not 
able to actually be effective in a lot of our decision making because we're playing that catch up. So those are a couple of anti-patterns to look for as well. So I might leave it there for today. There's quite a lot in that. Um, I, as I said, I will go through the other six capabilities as well over the next coming weeks so that you've got the full set. But yeah, I'd really encourage you to go out and start to think about what does uncertainty and ambiguity look like for me today? What's my tolerance look like today? And um, one of the journal exercises I've started doing is actually thinking about a theme, actually journaling, journaling what my lived experience of that is today. So give yourself an example, give, give yourself five, 10 minutes, write down a couple of examples of how you are tolerating the uncertainty and the ambiguity in your work life today. And then that becomes a really great reflection point for six months from now when you say, am I still telling the same story or am I telling a different story about how I've grown this capability within myself? So um, I'll leave you with that today. I hope that was helpful. And um, yeah, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having an awesome, awesome day. Uh, New Zealand's back in lockdown, which is not so much fun. Um, but I'm hoping that everybody's working through what they need to and uh, yeah, I think maybe that's what's driving a lot of this mindset work at the moment is that, that, that reminder from the universe to look inward, to self-reflect, to do some of this work again on myself um, and I guess also to, to document that for you as well um, so that you can be benefiting from some of the things that I'm thinking about as well. So yeah, hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day. I will see you next week.